Now, there are different ways of thinking about piecewise functions. Sometimes we can look at the picture of them, the graph, or sometimes we can actually be given an algebraic formulation for them, and they look sort of scary. Here's one. Lots of stuff going on here. First of all, a big uh, bracket here. What's going on? Well, f of x is defined to be one of three things depending upon the value of x. So if x is in this region, then the function is this. If x is in this region, the function is this. If x is in this region, the function is this. So basically, you can think of this sort of like a computer program. You input x, and to figure out the output, you first have to ask yourself, well, is x, it's like playing 20 questions. But in this case, you're playing three questions. Is x smaller than 0? Is x between 0 and 3, possibly equaling 0? Or is x bigger than or equal to 3? And then depending upon the answer, that determines the value of the function. Let's try some examples with this function f. Let's find x. If x is going to be negative 5, let's figure out what f of x is. So what's f of x? So f of negative 5 will equal, well, I don't know which it equals, so I have to ask a question about negative 5. Is negative 5 less than 0? Well, yeah, actually it is. So therefore, I stop immediately, and I know that the case that I'm looking at is this case right here. So the function is defined to be that, which is negative 1. What about when x equals 3? Is 3 less than 0? No. Is 3 greater than or equal to 0? but less than 3? Well, no. 3 is not less than 3. So this is not the case we're in. Is 3 greater than or equal to 3? Well, yeah. In fact, 3 equals 3. So in fact, this must be the case we're in, which, which means the value of the function in this case is 15. Little tricky. Little tricky. Let's try one more together. See if we can warm up. So g of x now. Um, is defined to be one of two things, one of two things depending upon whether x is less than 3 or greater than or equal to 3. And so now to figure out exactly the values, we have to again ask ourselves, well, if you want to find g of minus 5, what is minus 5? Am I in this situation or this? Well, is minus 5 less than 3? It sure is, so that means that this is the piece of the function I want to look at, which means that the value of the function g at that point is going to be 2 times negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 11. What about g evaluated at 3? Is 3 less than 3? No. Is 3 greater than or equal to 3? Absolutely. So now for x equals 3, we're in this particular case of the function. And so now the function is going to be 3 squared plus 7, which is going to be 9 plus 7 or 16. So you can see that a piecewise defined function is defined to be different things on different pieces, different allowable values for x. So it's important when you see this kind of thing to realize that you just don't plug in into x. You got to find out what is the right place to plug in. Ask yourself, my x, does it satisfy this? Does it satisfy that? Once you figure that out, that's the function you use for that piece. That's why it's called piecewise defined functions.